you've got kids and you want to know where should they be going to school? How should you be prepping them for college? What should you consider public? Should you be considering private? Should you think about the neighborhood first or should you think about the school first? Well, today's expert guest is Kathy Block Schwartz and she's an independent school consultant. And we're gonna go over everything you need to know to get the process started, to figure out the answers to the questions. We all know that your child's education is one of the most important things that a parent should consider. And so that's what we're gonna to cover today. Stay tuned to the end of the show to get Kathy's information and find out links where you can get our relocation guide and our school information guide. On today's broadcast, we've got a very special guest, Kathy Block Schwartz, and we're gonna go over everything that a parent might need to consider when they're moving to Austin, looking at schools and um, possibly considering public versus private, high schools, and then college. So, Kathy, very happy to meet you. And, uh, you know, you and I were just talking before, you, you worked at um, uh, Trinity, where my, my kid goes for seven years, is that right? I did, I yeah. did. I worked well, in their high school placement program, and I taught speech and communications. Okay, and what did you do before that? So I've had my own consulting business for many years, working with students going to um, independent schools, boarding schools, colleges, and then students going to grad school, med school, law school on personal statements. Okay, so you know, I saw on your LinkedIn, um, it says that you're an independent school consultant. So for those that don't know, what is that? So I work with families and their children to find the best fit educational option for them. So I don't work for a school, I work for the family to help them identify where their child would be best placed. Gotcha. So what are some of the things that parents should consider when they're moving to Austin and considering a private versus a public school? So Austin has a lot of really great neighborhoods and a lot of really great schools and we have what are called independent school districts. Mm -hmm. um, so when a family's considering moving here, they usually are either considering a particular neighborhood or they're looking for a particular kind of school for their student. So they have to make that decision first. Yeah. And then after that, it comes down to public or private. So when I talk to families, we talk about what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, many students, um, want to play sports and Austin has a very competitive sports scene in, in middle and high school. So oftentimes parents might look at private schools or an independent school so their children have an opportunity to do the arts, mm -hmm. to do sports, to do things that maybe they wouldn't have the opportunity to do in a big public school setting. Gotcha. You know, as we're talking about this, I just considered, I just thought of another reason why they might consider you. It's like, you know, we went to, uh, we moved to Barton Hills and been there for 12 years. And when we were considering middle school, there was what we're zoned to and there was like three other options. And for us, we wanted to do private and, you know, having thought of just what you said, my son wanted to play football, all that type of stuff, it would have been really helpful to figure out if they're already in a neighborhood, right? And they're not planning on moving, obviously, right. like, we could have come to you and say, okay, what are the pros and cons of the private schools? Right, yeah. and, I, and I will say sometimes families are looking, when they move here, they're looking for a K through 12 option. Yeah. And, and we have those, but also I always say to parents, the child you have now in first, second, fifth grade mm -hmm. is not gonna be the child you have in high school. So sometimes parents will come to me because they've been in one setting and they're looking for something different for middle school or high school. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so when, when, when people are moving here from out of town, should they consider the neighborhood first or the school first? Well, that's a chicken and egg question. Yeah. Uh, some parents are going to move here and uh, for whatever reason are going to consider only a few neighborhoods. And by definition, that then will inform what schools, public school options they have. Yeah. Um, I think that moving, uh, let's be clear, moving can be stressful. Yeah. And usually people with young children, that's a whole um, 
transition that the family has to make. So I think you have to really decide what's more important to you. That's right. Yeah, because if living in a neighborhood is more important and you have the funds to put your child in a private school, well, that's where you come into play as well. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, how soon should parents be thinking about college and what can they do to prepare their kids? So the, the short answer is um, s students and families should really start thinking about college as they move into ninth grade, mm -hmm. believe it or not, which I know sounds really early, but I work with a lot of families helping them design the curriculum based on what they think they want mm -hmm. in, the, in the next chapter at college or university. So, and by that I mean parents need to think about, and students need to think about summer work. Where are they going to put their efforts in high school? Because um, many parents, when I ask them, um, what they think colleges are looking for, they'll say well-rounded students. Yeah. And my child was in five clubs and you know played three different JV sports. And I always have to inform them that that is actually not what colleges are looking for. They're looking for kids who bring a specific talent or interest. So while you want your children to be well you know, diversified, you also have to have an eye of what volunteer work are they doing? What What's gonna set them apart yeah. in that college admissions process? Gotcha. So at the end of this broadcast, we're gonna have, um, you know, you tell people where to reach you. I just wanna tell that to the, to the audience here. Um, we'll also have links to our um, ultimate uh, moving guide in Austin, a relocation guide, as well as links to some of our blogs about uh, the different school districts. So stay tuned for that. Um, you know, one thing I've heard from different people in, in, at Trinity and other schools and, and whatnot is like in the beginning, you know, my son's in middle school, you know, have, have him go out and do as many sports as possible and then kind of rein that in, you know, in, in, in high school. Is that kind of your experience? Because it kind of talks to what you were just saying about right. they're not looking for a kid that does everything or a right. kid that specializes. So, so this is also a sad truth sometimes P parents have to face. If, if your student is, let's say, is a golfer mm -hmm. and UT has a great golf program mm -hmm. and your child wants to play golf for UT, well, if they aren't good enough to play golf for UT and they have spent since middle school playing golf and perfecting their game, they're not gonna bring necessarily something that UT wants. Right. So because college admissions is never about just the GPA mm -hmm. or the grades in high school. Colleges look at all kinds of things. They look at diversity. They look at GPAs. They look at test scores, mm -hmm. increasingly less on the test scores. Yeah. They look at um, recommendations. They look at what contributions your child has made to the community. So it's it's not just a linear process. It's really multifaceted when 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 colleges are looking at students. Gotcha. Okay. Um, in what type of situations do you think a parent should consider moving their child from a public to a private school? I mean, we already talked about one right. where, where you know, you've been living in a neighborhood and maybe you don't like the, the, the middle school that they're zoned for, but what other type of situations, say they're moving to Austin and public versus private? So, for the most part, private schools have a smaller student-teacher ratio, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a benefit. Um, they also have, one of the things you're paying for in a private or independent school is the opportunity for your child to participate in a lot of different activities. Mm -hmm. And independent schools have the resources to have those things. Not only sports and arts and music and, and, and well-developed programs, they also have things uh, like math specialists and reading specialists that the public schools have but not necessarily in the in the amount that a private school might offer. Yeah, higher degree of it, more attention to, to uh, yeah. less students. Yeah, that yeah. is what you're paying for is your student um, is getting simply more attention. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, what are the common questions or situations that parents come to you uh, for, for choosing different schools or choosing schools at all really? They want, often, student, uh, parents will ask me, where do the kids go to college? Mm -hmm. it, where, where do the kids go to college? And the, yeah. uh, if it's a high school situation. 
Um, they'll also ask about religious affiliations mm -hmm. and how that plays into the decision on a particular school. Um, they'll ask about how many, uh, how diverse the student body is. Mm -hmm. um, they'll ask, involve questions like that. They'll also ask questions, you know, what's the food like? Yeah. And do the kids have to wear uniforms? Yeah. All well, those things matter. They matter to families, they matter to students. Um, again, when families are moving here, families want to find the best living space for themselves and their family, and they want to find the best academic. Gotcha. Um, so I want to talk a, a little bit more about college, but before I do, what do parents need to consider about high school as they are thinking about college? And we covered, I know we covered a little bit about that with, you know, what they're doing with, uh, you know, sports activities and volunteer work, it's, but, but it, like, let's say you're, you're, you're trying to help a, cl a, a client choose a, um, a high school and what, what would you prep them for if they kind of know what they want to know about college or where they, they want to go in college? Well, if a student knows where they want to go to college, which I will say is rare, yeah. um, but they might know, uh, I think I want to go to law school or yeah. I think I want to be a doctor. Yeah. Um, so I'll talk to them about taking advanced level, for example, advanced level science classes, yeah. those kinds of things. But if a student, so if a student knows what they want, we'll have that conversation. If a student doesn't know, I really do encourage them to try out as many things as they can, as many classes, mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes students find something that really excites them and that leads them into their college search. Yeah, and as, as I can speak from <laughs> vast experience is that my son doesn't know what he wants until I make him do it. Right. <laughs> right? That's, that's boys in middle school are, yeah. are an interesting, uh, but they're they're wonderful and kids are great in in, in middle school yeah. because they're they're just they're so willing and they're finding their way. Yeah. But once high school begins, you really do see a transition. Yeah. And parents get very worried about their students grades and and what level classes they're taking yeah and i will tell you colleges do look at at um, level of difficulty so if a student parents this is something parents often ask me is it better to get an a in a regular class or a b for example in an honors class it's always better to have a b in an honors class uh. because that shows the school that you're challenging yourself yeah and I always say to parents, when you're thinking about your child's high school journey and where they might attend college, think about if, you, if you're hiring, who do you look for? Yeah. You look for creative, problem solvers, kind people, interesting people, people who can write, people who can communicate. That's what colleges are looking for. That's great. Okay. Yeah. And just so you know, my son already knows he wants to be a quarterback at LSU. Well, you know what? <laughs> I wish him only the best. Yeah, I hope he knows all the plays already. I mean, he, he, you know, it's interesting when he, when he said, he's been saying that he's been playing flag football for like five years. He said he wants to be uh, a quarterback. I, I'm like, okay, sure, sure. But he, you know, he's, he's can, he can throw, that's for sure. You know what? It's, it, it's becoming more of a reality every day. Kids should go after their dreams. That's so. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I've been told UT has strict requirements for kids to get accepted. And as such, if a kid um, has a high GPA, but they go to a school where the average GPA is higher than the rest of the schools, um, what should they consider? And, and, and first of all, tell me, and that is true, we talked a little bit before, but, but what is the, uh, the requirement for UT? Well, UT because it is a state school and funded by the legislature, they are required to take a certain number of in-state in students. Yeah. So that is designed by your placement in your class mm -hmm. if you're in a public high school. And it's pretty cut and dried. Yeah. After that initial cut, then they take students that meet things, meet areas that they need. Sports, yeah. different kinds of areas. but. But UT also has a program where, um, and it's a great school. It's one of the top state schools in the country. Yeah. So lots of students want to go there, but not everyone 
can go there even with top grades. Yeah. But they offer a program, CAP program, where you can go to one of their other campuses and transfer in. Okay. Um, uh, so I always say to parents, when you're looking at UT, you have to be realistic that even if your child has a you know a four zero average, they may or may not get into UT. Right. So I work with families to develop other options where their students will be just as happy. Gotcha. So that's a good good information. So like they can go to like some of their other affiliate schools, but it, but but I mean you know don't put your eggs in one basket. Apply to like other good state schools. Oh, absolutely. And 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 you know it's not a secret that private education is, is exorbitantly expensive. Yeah. And if your student is going to go on, let's say, to, to law school or wants to get a master's in education or any, any, any advanced degree, you're looking at a lot of money. And we have a lot of great schools right here in Austin, both yeah. public and private, yep. and in the Austin vicinity. So I encourage parents to look very carefully at UT, but also some of the surrounding schools. Right, and so like one of the benefits of working with you may be to help, you know, forget UT for a second, but other private schools, like, you know, uh, if they can develop the curriculum, the work habits and all that, they could possibly get them a scholarship. They may make the, make the money they spend on you three times over. That's possible as well. There are schools that have merit scholarships. Yeah. And um, one of the things we haven't touched on, one of the very important parts of the college uh, application process is the essay yeah and um, the essay is really hard for a lot of students to write because they're used to the analytical pieces that they have to write for high school yeah compare and contrast where a really good college essay shows the admissions office something about the student that they can't glean from anywhere else in the application. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for students to do. So that is, I spend a lot of time working with students on that as well. Um, so yes, that it's, it's a multifaceted, multi-pronged approach yeah. to, to the college application process. Yeah. But as I say to all my families, your child will go to college, mm -hmm. your child will be successful, and your child will be happy. Yeah. The, the, look around, kids, yeah. kids are happy, and it's just stressful in the moment. That's part of my big job, to, right. to decrease stress and help them navigate what they see as muddy, troubled waters. Yeah, it's preparation. It's preparation, yeah. and it's having, having proper expectations as well. We know that, um, there are other states that have rests, reciprocity for in-state for um, for in-state tuition with with Texas. Is that right? I know that Arizona does uh -huh. uh, occasionally. Well, but that's that's not as common. Yeah, there's only a couple. There's right? only a few, and um, again, sometimes if if a if a university wants a student, they'll offer them in-state tuition. Okay. Yeah. So it's not necessarily reciprocity. It's just they'll offer them. Yeah. Uh, the opportunity to come as an in-state student. And what should parents be thinking about when helping their their children decide on a college? So the well, the first things you have to look at. Um, when, when I, and when I start this process with families, I talk to the students. I find out what they're interested in. Yeah. Um, a student who loves to ski might want to go to school in the Northeast or Colorado if, if that's something that's really important to them. Conversely, if a student hates cold weather, probably looking below the Mason-Dixon line. Yeah. So it's, it's some things as basic as that. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's also, if a student has gone to a small private independent school here in Austin, mm -hmm they may or may not be a good candidate for a large state university. Right. So it, it really depends on the conversations I have with the family on what the student's looking for and what the family is looking for. But also like um, graduate degrees, right? Um, how does that factor in when you're choosing a, a college? Well, that, that, de that depends. Uh, like, like most things, there's no clear-cut answer, but most students don't attend the same school. Um, or at least the students I've worked with, will attend one school for an undergraduate and then go to a different college or university for a master's. Right. Well, if they know they want to go to get a master's at like Harvard or MIT, does it, does the college that they go to before uh, have any bearing? Oh, sure. Yeah. The schools always will look at your G GPA 
that's very important. Yeah. But but when you're talking about graduate school, there are uh, standardized tests, the LSAT for law school, the MCAT for medical yeah. school. Those tests really matter. But of course, those those the next step school is going to be looking at your grades very carefully, what school you went to and what your grades were. So I often say to families, you know, it's better to be, um, it can be better, not necessarily, but it can be better to be a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Really get to know your professors, mm -hmm. really have, make a mm -hmm. name for yourself so that when it comes to writing a recommendation yep. for your graduate program, they really know you. They really have something to say about you. Yeah. This is great information. So, Kathy, where can people find you if they're looking to get more information or possibly hire you? So, the best way to reach me is by email, and that is Kathy, K A T H Y, Block, B L O C H, Swartz, S W A R T S, at gmail.com. Awesome. And if you're watching this and you want more information or you want our relocation guide and our, our guide to uh, schools in Austin, you know, click the comment sec in, the, in the description section below this video. Thank you guys. We have another video coming up right there that you'll see uh, with a relevant subject that, that will be determined soon. Thank you.